try to do in transcend when there is a problem. And an obvious problem is the way business is run, then we ask the question, what can be done about it? And that question is being asked many places in the world now. And there is a compact between business and United Nations, for instance, about respecting human rights. And we can only welcome that. There is a movement going on. But when it comes to peace business, the question we ask the three authors, Fred Duby, who is a Canadian with enormous experience from China, Muslim countries, and above all the United Nations, Jack Santa Barbara, businessman who was providing health services to Canadian companies and ministries, and is now in New Zealand on a project called Sustainable Villages, as a consultant to villages that want equity and a low ecological footprint. And myself, a peace theoretician and peace practitioner, we ask ourselves what will business look like if peace were among the concerns in addition to profit. We are not saying that you should not make a profit, but it should not be excessive and you should consider a little bit how you do it. Okay, here are four points. Let me just mention those four points. Point one, you try to organize a business company in such a way that it is not filled with structural violence. And that means a very low distance within dialogue between the shareholders, the chief executive officer, the management, the workers, the clients, the suppliers, the surrounding community and nature. These are eight. Imagine you had all eight in one room, you would have to have a guy who represents nature. And you have a dialogue about all problems. So you have a kind of horizontalization of the company. That's condition number one. Condition number two is that when you engage in trade, and it can be inside a country or between countries, be guided by the rule of equity. And equity simply means that it should not only be for mutual benefit, but for equal and mutual benefit. So it's not a question of two guys at the top signing an agreement, willing barrier and willing sinner. But it's a question of the effects drizzling down from that agreement. And let us say that the agreement is made in such a way that on this side people remain dirt poor, and on this side they are just a happy little group at the top cashing in all the income, but that's not equitable. It should have equal and good effects. Now that has to do very much with side effects or externalities as we call it, and equalizing them. Now point number three is of course nature. And nature means respect for nature, not only to sustain it, but to enhance it. Have nature as a genuine partner in your business. And number four, the last one, what do you do with profit? Well, we say nothing illegal in it, but it shouldn't be excessive as mentioned. It could be ploughed into the same company again, or it could be distributed. So one way of distributing it is, of course, better prices for the clients, for the customers. And this brings us to the point, namely, always have basic needs in mind. Do the business so that people survive. Their physical wellness increases. They have lots of options, they have freedom. You might like to, as a businessman, produce various kinds of the same product, so that there is a choice. And do all of this in Compatibility, make it compatible with people's religions and faiths and ideologies. And they differ very much from place to place. But these are the type of concerns we have in mind, and that I spelled out in the book Peace Business to be Santa Barbara, Galton, Transcend University Press 2009.